Hey guys, this is Kunov, and this is going to be part 6 of my YouTube series for 3 modeling using Fusion 360. In this video, we are going to be talking about the construction tools along with the sweep tool and the loft tool. Alright, so now let's look at the construction tools. So what the construction tools are are there a way that you can make custom planes axes and points that can be used in that can be used to make other sketches and to be used to make more complicated geometry a good example of the way of what you can do or use to make with the construction tools is you can make a cup you can make a lamp a chandelier you can make all these types of complicated things if you can use the construction tool right here in this video, we are only going to be talking about the, ba the basic parts of planes, axes, and points. So let's get into that. So the first thing in here is the offset plane. The offset plane, by its definition, is, a, is you can create a plane, a custom plane, that is a distance away from another plane. So the way you would show that is you would click the offset plane right here. And you can click any of the, you can click any face of a solid, or you can click any of the default planes. So I'll just click this one right here. And right here, you're going to have a tab right here that have two, two parts. There will be a plane, and there will be the type of distances. So the two things in extent that you have is distance and two object. Two object is, oh, you can specify where it will go to like another face of like a cube and distance would just be a number we're going to use so we're just going to use distance and let's just call this about 50 millimeters and we can just press ok and now we have another tab here it's called construction and we now have a new plane and what we can do in this plane is we can actually go and define a sketch right here and that sketch would be 50 millimeters higher or exactly where the plane would be. So that is how you will be able to do offset planes. So the next thing we're going to learn in construction is going to be the plane at an angle. Now this is a plane that you can create at well a specific angle. And in order to create a plane that's going to be at an angle you would first have to have a line. So in this case we're just going to use one of the axes. You know the x, y, or z axis. I'll use the z axis. So once you click that or any line you have, you can basically just make this plane at any angle you want. You can make this, you know, 45 degrees. You can make it 30 degrees, 30 degrees. You can even make it 100 degrees. It's just your choice. So if I make this, you know, 45 degrees right here, I can create a sketch that's going to be exactly 45 degrees on that axis. And if we unhide the origin, it will just be right there. So that is how you do a plane through an angle. So the next thing we're going to learn in construction is going to be the plane at an angle. Now this is a plane that you can create at well a specific angle. And in order to create a plane that's going to be at an angle you would first have to have a line. So in this case we're just going to use one of the axes you know, the x, y, or z axis, I'll use the z axis. So once you click that or any line you have, you can basically just make this plane at any angle you want. You can make this, you know, 45 degrees. You can make it 30 degrees, 30 degrees. You can even make it 100 degrees. It's just your choice. So if I make this, you know, 45 degrees right here, I can create a sketch that's going to be exactly 45 degrees on that axis. And if we unhide the origin, it will just be right there. So that is how you do a plane through an angle. Now the final thing we're going to learn in plane is going to be a tangential plane. Now a tangential plane is where we have a round surface and we create a plane that is tangent to it. So in order to do this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to first create a sketch and we're just going to create a random circle on the origin. And it can be any size you want. It can be 50 millimeters, it can be 40 millimeters, you know, so on and so forth. So I'll make it 50 and I'll just do a simple extrusion after that. And I'll just make it 100 millimeters high. 
arbitrarily obviously and now we're going to go to construct and we're going to click on tangential plane so tangential plane you would specify a round surface keep in mind you can only select round surfaces and you can't collect you can't click on the high the flat surfaces like the one up here the one down here so I'll just click on the round surface and as you can see you can ha you can basically put it at any angle the default angle is going to be the one that's going to be parallel to any of these planes but you can specify any angle you want now this is really good if you want to do like holes through a round side or you would want to make like a handle for a cup so th so this is a very helpful tool overall so I'm just gonna make it randomly 90 degrees and now we have a tangential plane right here so one other thing I forgot to mention is gonna be the midplane so the midplane is basically where you have two faces and you can create a plane that is right in the middle of it so to show what this is we're gonna click the construction tool and unhide the origin and I'm gonna put a plane that's right here and it's gonna be 15 millimeters and what the midplane will do is if you select two planes you will create a third plane that's right in the middle of it so a good thing that can be very good with this is that you could create specific parts of a body like for instance if you are creating a roller coaster cart and you want to create like the middle part of the cart you can just use the mid plane for that without having to do much with anything else so that is a very helpful tool to do with the mid plane now that covers it with the plane let's move on to the axes so the two that we're going to talk about is we're going to be just talking about the axis through cylinder cone and torus and the axis perpendicular at a point so the axis through cylinder cone or torus is very simple to describe so what we're first going to do is we're just going to create a simple circle or a simple cylinder by just doing the top plane and just a circle that extrudes so if you as you can see we're just going to make a 50 millimeter circle like before and then we are going to extrude this about 100 millimeters and now in order now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the axis of cylinder and we can click a face so it's going to select any round face as you can see right here but what it does is it puts an axis right here and exactly through the cylinder now this is a tool that is very helpful because you can do many different instances which has circular patterns such as like gears and you can also do like chain sprockets and belt idlers with that so it's a very helpful tool now the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the axis perpendicular at a point so in this case we would select a face again but this time it can be any face you want it can be round and it can be flat so if we surf if we click on the round surface you, as you as you can see there's only one thing in the tab and uh, and as you can see again there's an axis that's going to go right perpendicular through the face so if this is for instance the, uh, the face it will go perpendicular or make a 90 degree angle with it now if we click on this face it will do the same thing where it will make a 90 degree angle like that so that covers it with the two main axes that you're going to use now keep in mind you can still use like random lines you create in sketches for axes so if you'd want in fusion this is a tool that's specifically used for fusion 360 or should i say feature so that is a very helpful thing to learn the future for future things now that covers it with axes now let's move on to points so points are generally just references that you can use for multiple sketches so in order to show what that is we can just well so let's create a sketch at the top plane it can be any plane you want again and let's create a rectangle right here right here 
we'll just let's just make it 50 by 70 doesn't matter what dimension to use let's first finish so now let's just let's go to the construct and let's press point through at vertex so you can just click any of these points and now the point now it's going to show in the construction tool right here now you may be wondering, well, what's the point of this? Why would I want to do this when you can you can already select it right here? Now let's do another thing. Let's do another thing in the construct tool. Let's do an offset plane. Let's make it minus fifty. You know, make it the same, same length away, same length away as here. So let's create a sketch on this plane. And now what's a really cool thing is that in this plane you can select this point. Unlike before, you can actually have the ability to just select points that are right here. And now you can actually just create two boxes that are exactly connected to each other that are at an angle. So that is just a very good feature that you can use with points overall. Now let's move on to doing the point through two edges. So as, as seen in the description, you would just have to click on two lines. It can be here and here, and it will create the point at the intersection of these two lines. So right here, and that would just create the point right here that you can use in other sketches. That covers it with the basics in the construction tab. We're now going to move on to sweeps. So sweeps by is going to be in the create tab, and what sweeps are, are they basically have, you have a face, and you have a line and what the fit what this will do is it will kind of be like extrude where it pulls it but instead of doing it in a straight line it will follow the contour or the shape of that specific line now this is a tool that's gonna be super helpful if you want to make like just a, a CAD of like a wire or a CAD of just anything you want like you can make even tissue paper with this so this is a very helpful tool so let's first, I'll show you how to do it. So we're going to use the box as before, and we're going to create um, a sketch that is perpendicular to here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a random contour. It'll be to here. It'll be, we'll make a random arc instead of a line, actually. So we'll create a three-point arc. We'll just make this one here. We'll make this here. We'll make it here. We're not going to, we're not going to constrain it right now. We're just going to show you, I'm just going to show you how it works. So we're going to create tab, we're going to press sweep, we select this profile, and we select the path. Let me and there, and there are two different types of sweeps. There's a parallel sweep and a perpendicular sweep. A parallel sweep is simply where the face of the of the end of the path is going to be parallel to here. Now per, and now the perpendicular is going to be where the face is going to be perpendicular. But in this case, I can't do the perpendicular because the contour is not going to allow that. And that is how you do a sweep. So in this case, as I said before, you can do really cool shapes. Like you can even make like a snake in Fusion 360. Now there are multiple types of this. There's a single, there's a path and guide rail, and there's a path to guide surface. The path to guide rail, as you can see, there's going to be two different lines that you can have so it can kind of follow it like a guide rail and a guide surface is where you're going to have another surface like from an object and it will basically follow that so i'll just do single path because we only have that right now so the final thing we are going to be talking about in this video is going to be the loft tool so the loft tool to give a basic gist of what it does is you will have two features or you can call it profiles in this case and what this does is this will form a body between those things and it will follow or at least match the contour of the faces that you have made. So to demonstrate what this does, I'm going to first make a offset plane right here. And I'm just going to make it 50 millimeters above. You can do any distance you want. Just make sure it's a nice even number because it's just easier to remember. Also make sure you unhide the origin because you can be able to create sketches there. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch right here and I'm going to make two circles. I'm going to make a 70 millimeter circle and the center point that's usually defined with the offset plane. And then I'm going to make a second circle that's going to be 50, millim 50 millimeters. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, another plane, another sketch that's going to be the plane parallel to this. So it can be here. Now, in this case, you can do any dimensions you want, even with the top one you can. But make sure in the bottom plane, make sure the circles are either smaller or larger. It cannot be the same exact size as the one before. So I'll make it 40 and 40 millimeters, and I'm going to make it 20 millimeters. Again, you can make these anything you want, but as long as you make this either smaller or larger than this circle, you will you'll see the demonstration pretty well. So I'll finish sketch, and now we're going to do the loft tool. So the loft tool has a profile section, and you can click on multiple profiles. So I'm going to click on this one as a profile, and I'm going to click on this one as a second profile. And as you can see, it makes this kind of cup shape right here that you can see. It follows the contour, or at least has the contour of these two faces, but it will form a body, as you can see right here between these, so you can make a cone-like shape. And if I press OK, you're going to have it like this. So as you can see, I made some kind of cone-like shape just by using the loft tool. An additional feature to the loft tool is going to be the centerline loft. So in order to again demonstrate what that does, I'm going to create a sketch. But in this case, if you're following along, I'm going to make it perpendicular to this plane. I am going to create two construction lines that are going to be here. That's going to hit here and here and here and here. And I'm going to make what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the lines parallel. Let me actually delete this line and make this easier. I make these exactly parallel to the axes and this perpendicular. I'm going to make this one, the length, the distance here is the exact length as the radius. So since I did 75 millimeters, it will be 35. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be creating an arc. A three point arc. So one, the first point's gonna be right here, the second one's gonna be right here, and third one is and make sure you just make sure it's make sure it's not in this case, make sure it's not um construction. And we're gonna make this arc tangent to this to this line. So we'll just use a tangent constraint and it'll be like here. Now the final thing to do with dimensions, I'm gonna make this the same length away from here as the radius of the circle. So that's gonna be twenty millimeters. And that's it. So now to show what the center line loft is, we're going to go to loft. We're going to click these two profiles again. And now when we click center line, we're going to click this right here. And as you can see, it will do the same thing, except it will follow the contour of this line like a sweep. So if I press OK, this is now making a little bit of a cool shape and it will follow the contour of this line. In this case, in this case. Now this is again a very helpful tool if you want to make, for instance, like if you want to make a water gun and you want to make like the tip of the gun, you can do that. You can also use this type of feature to make like kind of spirals in any type of design. And you can also make specific types of gears with this, like you know, herringbone gears to be a good example of this. So that covers it with lofts. So that covers it for this video. In the next video and for part seven, we're gonna be doing a special project with all of the features that you have learned so far with parts one through six. All right, see you.